Ruxolitinib is a JAK1-2 selective inhibitor, so it, it, it's equally potent against uh, JAK1 and JAK2, whereas fedratinib is really a selective JAK2 inhibitor. In addition, it's known to have uh, FLT3 and BRD4 inhibition as well. And it's, it's these nuances in the other um, uh, signaling pathways that are, um, that are inhibited that likely explain differences in toxicity profile, but perhaps also explain um, some of the differences in, in efficacy that can be seen. Fedratinib is not a JAK1 inhibitor, so that is a separation. Uh, they have different differential effects on JAK2. Uh, and of course, they have different impact potentially on other kinases that may be involved with the course of the disease. In the conduct of the studies, there was certainly a discussion whether fedratinib had a, a greater impact on bone marrow fibrosis or aspects of the disease like that. Uh, further validation of those differences, I think, are ongoing. Fedratinib is clearly quite active, both in the frontline and second-line setting. And the treatment algorithm will very much depend on what the landscape is at that moment, of course. Uh, without question, if fedratinib were the next approved agent in patients with myelofibrosis, that would include a, individuals that really have a suboptimal response to ruxolitinib, individuals in which the spleen has remained enlarged or uh, there was benefit, but they've lost the benefit. Uh, they have residual symptoms. There may be some differential effect potentially on cytopenias. We are now looking at the correlative data that was not available at the time of the conduct of these studies as it relates to the mutation profile. Without question, we are having greater granularity as to the impact of additional mutations on response, ASX01, spliceosome mutations, and others. If there is a mutation-driven uh, consideration of the utilization of these therapies, we are not there yet, but I think that that it will be an additional important part. Uh, ruxolitinib and fedratinib are two different agents, and I think we will learn more over time how they both might intersect. Fedratinib is a very active JAK2 inhibitor that demonstrated significant activity in both the frontline setting as well as the second line setting. The, the presence of a, of a potentially rare toxicity in less than 1% of patients, I think we need to better understand. I think as we use any therapy that has potential toxicities, we need to be mindful of those uh, toxicities. We may well find that we may be able to abrogate uh, that toxicity in the future as well. There was some suspicion that it was related to thiamine or thiamine metabolism or adequate amounts of thiamine. So again, things to be clarified in the subsequent clinical trial, but I have little doubt that there will be significant numbers of patients with myelofibrosis who will benefit from the use of fedratinib, and these final studies are meant to best be able to help to inform that decision-making as it relates to the utilization of the drug as well as the optimal dose. Uh, in the phase three study, there were two dose arms which were utilized, 400 and 500, uh, and through that process, I think a subsequent commercial use of the drug will have a, a very clarified dosing structure.